Hello again. You may recognize this. This is one of my homemade probes. So I cracked the ground strap on this again last weekend when I was running that BM869S. Typically what happened is it was cracking right where the alligator clip attaches to it. That was a piece of probably quarter inch wide braid. So I wanted to attach a new strap. So this is a piece of high strand copper. Well to do that you can see this solders right to this piece of brass tab and that's located underneath this piece of plastic. So in order to solder the new piece to this, I wanted to dismantle the probe. So I'll show you what this looks like on the inside, if you don't remember. You can see inside the tube, here's my brass ground strap. And this rides along this section of copper. This is actually copper foil that's been placed over a ceramic tube. Then there's some capped on tape that covers the ends of it. And this just slides inside like this. And then in the end here, this is a piece of Teflon. This actually is designed to fit down inside of the ceramic tube. So when I took this thing all apart, what ended up happening is I dropped the ceramic tube. And it hit something on the table, and it cracked about an inch chunk out of the end of it. Of course, that's not a standard piece that you can just go to the hardware store and buy. So I ended up getting a couple of new ones made. In case something ever happens again and I crack another one, at least I've got a spare. So if you watch the video where I was designing this probe, this is a piece of phenolic tube. And originally what I had done was covered this thing in wax paper. And then I have a wire that runs along the length of this that acts as a capacitor. And I had layered that in between the wax paper. And then I heated that with a heat gun to seal that up. So while I had this thing apart, I got rid of that wax paper and I replaced that with Kapton or polyamide tape. So I ran up quite a few layers over this. And then you can see I've reattached our wire. I had mentioned it in the previous video that it was kind of a hook shape. This is what it looks like. I've gone ahead already and tested this with a high voltage generator. So basically applying a high voltage across the front end of this. And this Kapton tape just works fine with this. You can also see that I've removed the Corona dope. So in the end where this is breaking down at the tip, I build up a bunch of Corona dope. And I'm no longer doing that. And part of the reason I could get away with that is I've also added that Kapton tape up over the end of that copper foil. And then wrapped it around that ceramic tube. So this setup works a lot nicer. And it looks a lot cleaner. Not that anybody ever sees the inside of this probe. So I've seen quite a few videos where people have made high voltage probes. What they'll typically do is take a bunch of resistors, they put them in series, and then they put a small capacitor across each one. And if you've watched videos where I've made high voltage probes, I've always just used a piece of magnet wire like this to make that capacitor. There's a couple of reasons I do that. One is I can tune this thing to get a fairly flat response out of the probes. The other reason I do it is the breakdown voltage for this is pretty high. This phenolic tube is up there pretty good and then layered with that capped on tape. If you watch the first series where I was designing this, I got a lot of feedback. One of the comments I received was that you could not put the compensation network in the handle of the probe like this. Normally you see the compensation in a box that's located near the oscilloscope. So I pointed out that a company called North Star make some high voltage probes and they actually do have the compensation network up inside the handle like this. Of course the probe has to be matched to the cable so this is a piece of cable that always stays with this probe. So I showed the schematics for this. You can see up here is our compensation network. There are two gas discharge tubes. There's one here. There's one under here. Uh, this one is for the wire. The one on the bottom that's for the center point. Of course the return path for the ground it's going to be through this piece of copper braid. Again, when we fit this together, this braid will just get soldered back down to one of these brass standoffs, so that's the return point. So if it were to arc, it basically passes the current back through this ground strap. There's also a small TVS that's located at the end, and that has some serious resistance with it as well. Uh, we need that for the low leakage. Of course, this probe's been in service for a couple of years now. I haven't had any problems with it. Of course, then I have this small end cap. This is made out of Tecron. This just fits over the end, like so. All right, so you can see I've resoldered our ground strap. 
And then we get our trusty diddle stick out. So the way we're going to hook this to the network analyzer, the output of this cable is just going to go to this small buffer amplifier. Again, this probe is meant to be attached to the front end of an oscilloscope. It's essentially what this is doing is buffering this output so it can drive the 50 ohm input of the network analyzer. And this isn't going to be real good for a frequency response test, but it should be good enough to give us some idea how the probe's going to behave. This is an HP 3589A. It's a fairly nice system for its age. I've had this unit for several years now. It's been quite reliable. So let's change the measurement type to swept network. Alright, so currently this is 10 dB per division. We can hit the scale and let's just change the scale to 5 dB per division and move our reference line up a bit. Again, I'm sweeping out to 100 kilohertz starting at 1 kilohertz. Let's go ahead and increase this so frequency and let's just double that to uh, 200 kilohertz. It's pretty flat. Let's move it out further. We'll go to 500 kilohertz. Let's do 10 megahertz. Let's do sweep and we'll go to log. Looks pretty good. Let's do scale, auto scale. So this is a half a dB per division. Again, for not adjusting anything, it looks pretty good. It's just adjusting one of the capacitors. You can see what a difference that makes. So again, you'd like this thing to just basically be as flat as possible. Uh, let's go ahead and move the frequency out even further uh, let's go to 50 megahertz let's see I've changed the scaling to 2 dB per division I just want you to be able to see kind of what's going to happen here so I'm just going to move these cables a little bit by my hand You can see it's a big change in the frequency response. That's part of the problem is I don't really have a good test fixture for looking at this scope probe. But normally I'm not really caring about the signal fidelity up, you know, above even a megahertz. But as you can tell, it looks pretty flat. So it's very reasonable for just putting it back together. Again, I've made quite a few changes. I'm sure that the Kapton tape will have a different dielectric coefficient than what that wax paper does. So we're going to have to retune this whole probe. On my left you can see I have my Brahman BM869S out. This is not the meter that I purchased a few years ago. That's this one here. This is actually the one that I performed all the testing on. So if you watch my videos, the last time you saw this meter, I had subjected it to a 14,000 volt transient and the meter survived just fine. I haven't done anything else with that meter since. So I just thought I'd use it for this video to show you that it still is functional. Alright, so you can see I have my ESD gun out. Again, I can use this as a high voltage DC power supply. This cannot put out a whole lot of current, so eventually the meter and this probe is going to load this thing down. So I'm not sure how much we're going to be able to get out of it, but we should get enough to see reasonably what the DC effects are. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll turn up our power supply a little bit. So this is currently 100 volts per division. So let's go ahead and adjust this thing up to about 100 volts. And you can see we're one division up at 100 volts. Let's go up a little higher. So there's four divisions up. You can see we're right at 400 volts. And this is 50 millivolts. 
So one division is 500 volts. Let's take it up to a thousand. See we're now two divisions up roughly or basically a thousand volts. Let's try going up a little higher. I'm not sure how much more we'll be able to get out of our power supply here. There you go, that's uh, 1.5 kilovolt, and we're three divisions up. So DC-wise, the probe is just fine. Again, I didn't change anything in the divider network. So changing out the ceramic tube and swapping out our wax paper for the capped-on tape shouldn't really affect this at all. So the next thing I want to do is look at the AC performance. So to do that, I'm just going to use our function generator with a square wave output. Currently, I have it set for 100 hertz. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we get a square wave. There we go. See, it looks pretty good just the way it sits. Right here, it's got a little bit of a dip. And let's just zoom in vertically. And what we can do is average this a little bit. So let's just do five sweeps. Now you can see this little bit of a dip right here. See how this adjustment peaks it up here. And we want to basically try to get this thing flat. scope will stop calibrating we'll be all set and you'll see this adjustment moves this section over here up that looks really good there it looks pretty good there okay. see this little divot right here and let's just see if we can straighten that right up so here you can see I have my Tektronix P6013 probe out. Uh, the reason I actually designed this high voltage probe was because of the limitations with this Tektronix probe. This is rated for 12,000 volts, but it's only from DC to 100 kilohertz. Once you start exceeding 100 kilohertz, the derating curve on this comes into play. I'd have to look it up, but I remember when I was running some of the transients through the meters, uh, I was definitely getting to the point where I was exceeding what this probe was capable of doing. So rather than to risk damaging the probe, I just decided to build a second one. This pink trace, this is our Tektronix probe. And of course, this is our homemade probe here. Again, the divide ratio of this probe is pretty high. Uh, so I've got this thing all the way zoomed in. Of course, the Tektronix probe, uh, we can zoom in a little higher. It has a different divide ratio. And you can see the two probes track reasonably well. Uh, this Tektronix probe has a little dip here in the front. Nothing really bad. Again, for what I'm using these for, I'm just kind of looking for a gross reading. And again, I can slow this down farther. This is all the way down to 10 hertz. And you can see both probes are reasonably flat. We'll go ahead and set the averaging back to its minimum sweeps. And again, we can see the noise on this is fairly high, but the input impedance of this probe is quite a bit higher than the Tektronix as well. And again, that's the reason I can zoom in. You can see with this Tektronix probe, of course, we're turned all the way up with our homemade probe. But again, this is rated for a much higher voltage than what this probe is. So again, this is with a 10 hertz waveform. See, both probes are reasonably flat. Let's just crank it up. Uh, so this is 200 picoseconds per division. Here's two nanoseconds. You can see our homemade probe has a little bit more ringing to it. This is 10 nanoseconds per division right now. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the result. I think this will be just fine. So that I thought about this, you notice how they have the ground strap attached at the tip of this probe. Of course, I ran it all the way to the back. It would have been better to have the ground strap attached to the front like this probe. So I'm sure that's hurt our signal fidelity a little bit. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Alright, so before I actually run this test, I went through, basically cleaned all the insides of the probe. 
I want to make sure that there's no chance that this thing is going to break down. So even though it has the gas discharge tubes and the TVS's in there, this is just one of those things you just want to take your time with it. So anyway, so see I got the two probes in parallel and they're attached to our transient generator. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our transient generator. Okay, we can see it triggers. And there it is. Okay, so the red trace is our Tektronix probe. There we go, it looks pretty good. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. You can see the amplitude. Looks fairly close for the two probes. I'd say this is really acceptable. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing the probe get repaired again. I didn't save the original ground strap, but this is what I'm using now. This is a real high strand copper wire. But it's a lot more flexible. Hopefully this will hold up a lot better than the strap that I originally had. Well, until the next test. Later.